everybody, it's your boy Dev Paul. We back and we live for episode 12. I really appreciate y'all for staying along, you know, the episodes with me throughout the season of the Dev Hall Show. You know, we came a long way, you know, at the end of the day. You know, we're here, you feel me? Black History Month. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's Valentine's Day, yo. And y'all probably sitting here thinking like, all right, what's the point? The point is, you got two businessmen actually taking the time out their day to do an interview on Valentine's Day. You feel me? So I'm gonna get straight into it. You know, a lot of people have been watching a lot of my episodes. You know, I like to keep it different, um, versatile, I'm unpredictable. I like to have music, um, musicians, artists, rappers, um, singers, business owners, and entrepreneurs on my show. And um, this is actually one of the biggest entrepreneurs in the city of Philadelphia. Um, he's a young boy, just like me. Not a young boy, we're gonna put some respect on our name, but we young and, and the younger generation, but we making a name for ourselves. You know, um, like I said, I had a lot of rappers in the past, but this time we're gonna talk business. Um, we have Just Real in the building. You know, I'm gonna get him to introduce himself, but actually before I get into that, you know, um, I've been noticing him on Instagram. Um, before I met him, uh, I heard that he had a barbershop opening, and my man Mark wanted me to come down and do a, a quick little snippet of his, a, a, a quick little rap video in his barbershop. And I was like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll definitely record that. I had the time, to, um, the chance to actually network with him. Um, I told him I would like to have him on my show in the near future, and here we are today. What's up, what's up Just? How we doing? What's up, bro? Yo, man, let the, let the audience know uh, who you are, man. Appreciate you for having me. Most like definitely, <clears throat> We met at my shop, man, Top Young Bosses, TYB, right there on 22nd Street. Like, you know, um, you told me you had your show, like you already was, I already appreciated you coming out and just showing love to the shop. So, right. like I said, anything I could do to help, I was going to, you know, be right to it. So, but my name, my name is Just Real. You know, I, um, I'm one of the owners of TYB, Top Young Bosses Barbershop and Hair Salon. Right down North Philly on 22nd Street, 2927 North 22nd Street. Um, but yeah, just uh, that's just one of the businesses that I own. I'm just here to, uh, you know, talk to my brother Dev about just like the classes that I, um, that I now have. I uh, started these um, classes. I had my first class January 27th. Now I teach business and real estate classes. I teach about five courses, um, goal settings, business license, how to acquire a business license, uh, intro to credit, intro to real estate, and, astro, and actually how to travel the world. So, you know, I'm just, you know, just here to, you know, let y'all know, like, any way I can help, any way I can give y'all the game that we'll learn in school, right. you know, that's what, that's what I'm trying to fill the gap at. Right. Well, like I said, back on the Instagram thing, you know, um, like I said, I noticed he had a business. Um, he had the barbershop. He does appliances. You know, he's uh, into real estate as well. And then one day I was just sitting on the gram. You know, a lot of us scroll. She was popping on her timeline. Then I noticed he had a podcast popping. I'm like, hold up. They just opened a barbershop? Hmm. Like he, or he's, he's jumping into a different lane. I noticed he had a part, um, <clears throat> his podcast with his partner. And I'm sitting here like, all right, bet. I like to see young black entrepreneurs doing their damn thing. And then also, I noticed that he had a class. And I'm sitting here like, all right, you ain't got, you got, you ain't got that many people that's willing to give you game that they learned. You know, a lot of people are selfish. A lot of people don't like to help others because they feel as though they like to be one up in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I noticed he had a class, you know, touching on different topics that is beneficial to the community. You know, and on top of that, it was for a small fee, you know, for $100 at the end of the day. And if you feel like grabbing some kicks, you like to do that. Them kicks get dick. Now, all right, you gonna grab some new joints. $100 for knowledge that can right. help you in life. And can you elaborate on that though? Like what made you generate that type of seminar or class? Class? Well, um, just like throughout the years, like I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19, I'm 26 now. And just throughout the years, like I, from friends to acquaintances, just people that I come across just throughout my journey, people always ask me questions about business, real estate, like stuff like that. So. Now, instead of like just keep giving out like, little samples and whatnot, right. I decide to you know put a course together and then you know for those of that want you know feel though that's important for them to invest a hundred dollars into their future mm -hmm. or whatnot, I said I'm giving to them on a full course, and then you know we could go from there instead right. of like I said just giving out little bits and pieces. I'm gonna give you all the game for a hundred dollars. 
Right. Now, by you giving the game for $100, how was the outcome of the first class that you had? Um, my first class was, you know, I'm still in shock by my first class. Actually, like, my first class was amazing. Like, it was a sold-out house. I had actually had it at my barbershop and hair salon at TYB, mm -hmm. um, which was nice. Like, you know, like, right. a lot of people just talk, but it, it definitely um, helps build a more solid foundation where you can actually prove to people in their face, like, an actual working business. I'm not right. just talk, talking to y'all. I'm giving y'all the game, the blueprint on how I'm able to get right here and stand in front of y'all. Mm -hmm. Now, that right there makes sense. I think that's motivational, to be honest with you. You think about it, like, that's, that's like me saying, hey, everyone, I have a show, the Dev Hall Show, but I want y'all to come um, to my establishment. This is not my establishment. This is headquarter media establishment. So it's like in a joint, in a sense. But at the end of the day, that's like me saying, come down to my show, and I don't have a show. You, if that, if, if y'all catch what I'm saying, he basically said, "Yo, I want y'all to come down to my seminar. I'm giving y'all proof. Why? Because y'all actually are in y'all, y'all basically in in the in 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 environment that I own or that I'm I've run, right. and I'm giving y'all class. So that makes you feel some type of like some type of comfort in a sense. Now, one of the things you're helping the community with is fixing credit. Right. You know, now mm -hmm. what is the steps that you are taking to help the community fix credit? So basically, like with my next class, I'll actually have, you know, a professional uh, credit um, uh, credit advisor there this time. Before, you know, I, like how traditionally how I did my class, I just basically told them like my credit experience and how I didn't really learn about credit until I started get to getting into real estate. And that was, wasn't until I was like 20 years old. Okay. But you actually, you know, at 18, you could do a lot of stuff legally. So I told them how I was able to establish to go from not having no credit at all to going from zero dollar credit limit and taking it to a twenty thousand dollar credit limit mm -hmm. i was able to take my credit score from a 500 to 700 based off all self-knowledge and building relationships with you no know, um in the bank relationships all right all right now <clears throat> another thing real estate now right. i noticed that you just said that you've been in the real estate game for about 20 since you was 20. right now uh how can someone that has no knowledge of real estate but you know a lot of people in the philadelphia region are jumping on the real estate how can they just say hey i want to do it but i have no resources how could right. they if you don't mind because you know a lot of people may be attentive to joining your next right. class how could you give them a little snippet of how could they just jump into it um I was, learn? I was gonna say most definitely come to the class you know my, um i have my next class is march 3rd march 3rd sunday march 3rd from 10 a.m to 4 p.m you know it's a um Six hour class, but you get five su subjects. Six hours. With guest speakers and um, uh, there are professionals in that field for a hundred dollars. So, you know that's that would be step one. Okay. Step, <laughs> I like that, that step. Step two, you know, if you know, you might you might be busy that day. Right. You know, you can't make that day. There more, will be more dates in the future. But mm -hmm. YouTube, that's my best friend, honestly. Right. Like, I go on YouTube for everything, like mm -hmm. from like. You really, is, you can learn everything on YouTube. Right. So anything that you want to know, like um, how to flip a house, how to get in real estate, mm -hmm. um, books, like a lot, of, a lot of stuff is out there that we can learn on our own. Right. Now, I like that. Now, did anyone like motivate you or inspire you to be like your own type of boss? And can you explain what TYB means to right. those that don't know? Right. So um, to answer your first question, um, I really believe, I'm a firm believer in that saying, uh, you, you're either born with it or you're not. Like, like it just has to be in you. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I just was a natural born gift that had this job to always want to win and always to succeed by any means. Like, I just always been like that from, you know, I grew up playing sports, multiple sports. Mm -hmm. Like, I always competed, win championships and so forth like that. So, that's just always my natural job to be a champ, like Meek said, be a right. championship in real life. Uh, yes. in life. Now, oh, and my bad. Yeah, yeah. You said TYB. TYB what's, right. What do TYB mean? Well, I said TYB. That's the name of uh, my barbershop and hair salon. But before it was a, we had the, um, that establishment. We already had TYB, like just that name, Top Young Bosses. And what that really means is like, it's not just everybody that works at TYB or anything like that. Right. But it's just a mindset for real, like just believing that. There's no age limit on chasing a dream for real. Like at any age, 
you could be successful at any age you could be your own boss like i taught to the sixth and eighth graders today i told them that they all were bosses which were true mm -hmm. i told them you didn't have to own anything at that time it's just a mindset right. knowing that one day you will have your own so they're just you know like i said it's a mindset believing you could do it any day at any age and like i said everybody has their own definition but that's just one of them now by being a boss right this is something i actually was speaking to my mom about earlier today you know because um I feel as though I'm my own boss. I have my own show. Right, um, I'm most self employed uh, um, by have, doing Uber as well. Um, but the thing is, at a certain age, you know, I came from certain jobs that was making like double digits. I ain't talking like 10, 12, 15, 16. I'm talking about like dub and higher. Right. Like, came from job, job, I mean, jobs that a lot of people would love. No, most definitely. But after a while, I wanted to stop working for, for someone. Right. What, at what point in your life? Have you decided to do that, or what made you do that? Um, like honestly, like I, I I can agree with you. Like you know, having good jobs, like jobs that people will get comfortable with. Like I, I was hired by Amtrak. Yeah, you know like, <laughs> yeah people died by, to get that job. I was job. hired by Amtrak and AT and T at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, but um, I all my plan once I once I dropped out of school, like I went to college for one year. Mm -hmm. After that year, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't afford to go back to school. Okay. So from there, I just say, you know what, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. I'm gonna start working, and then somebody put me on a real estate. Like my man told me about these classes, took these classes, and my goal was always to be my own boss. Like I ain't working, I never not working. Like I, if people, like I tell my young boys, like yo, why you ain't working? Like what you doing? Like. I don't even hear nobody saying about. I don't even know they got working papers no more. But right, right. just to say, like that conversation, I but um, was happening. But mm -hmm. I use the jobs as a stepping stone to you know fund, you know to build my credit up to for me to be able to get my credit right, get in the real estate, and then catapult into being my own boss full time. Right, right. I like how you just flipped that, man. To be honest with you, I, I just wanted to say that because a lot of people frown upon people that are starting their own business. Why? Because it's not a norm. A lot of people feel as though the norm is, I want you to work for someone, I need you to get a college degree, right. work your ass off, and a lot of people don't realize, for the people that don't go to college or didn't go to college, a lot of people don't realize once you do those steps, half of the time you're not even jumping right into a, a so job that's good. in your major or in your field, and on top of that, Guess what? You got solid me knocking right at your door. Yeah, you know, check. you already know how it's going. Right. So you basically paying off debt for a job for a field that you're not even in yet, in order for you to cover those expenses. You know, I was just telling my mom this about earlier today. I feel as though a trade really matters because at the end of the day, right. a trade. A lot of people need a trade right. every day. That's one thing that would never go out of um, out of a uh, stock. To be honest with you, a lot of people be like, all right. When are we going to do this? When are we going to do that? And I'd be like, yo, like college, I don't know. I just feel a little college is overrated sometimes. And I'm in graduate school, about to obtain my master's. Mm. But one thing I wanted to talk to you about, traveling mm -hmm. the damn world, man. Traveling the world, man. You all over the ground with your shit, man. Uh, you've been to Paris? Right. You've been, you can name your spots, man. Talk to these people, man. Like, I just, I just want these people to be motivated because it's people that look like me and you. Right. They haven't been to these spots, man. Like, right. what motivates you to just want to jump out and venture off? No, or you just had the opportunity. You were just no, blessed with that like, opportunity. Like TV, like movies, everything. Like just seeing, like, like where we come from, and knowing that it's not like that of the places. Right. Like, why would I not want to take advantage of that? Why would I not want to explore my mind? And you know. Like just change my horizon, like that. Use that to motivate me. Whereas though I don't have to, you know, take these trips every so months or every couple of years. Like mm -hmm. I can live here. So just once you start traveling and go different places, like your mind start working different. You come back thinking different because like right. now you you know you're not one dimensional. Right now you know that are like like in dubai mm -hmm. like that's like the richest like the richest um country in the world for mm -hmm. like just being just for them people to be out there and their crime rate be so low but all of them be multi-millionaires and billionaires and be able to function mm -hmm. like just being able to function civilized like right. like to me that's mind-blowing like how could people just even you know what i'm saying like 
Listen, I can imagine because I, I went to Spain. I had the opportunity yeah. to go to Spain for study abroad. Um, and one thing Spain is big on is wine and um, bread. You know, they drink wine and they eat bread damn near at the same time. It's, it's weird, yeah. but that's their culture and no disrespect. But one thing I noticed, um, it can be, no lie, it can be over a thousand people. Just imagine Fairmont Park for the people that's from Philly, the plant. Imagine a thousand people in that area, right? A lot of people smoking, drinking, just having a good time. And you got cops lined outside of that area. No one is doing anything. No fights breaking out. No one's arguing. And it's the most civilized people I met in my life. You know, just made you think different. The point I was making, by you traveling, do you feel as though it gave you a different like perspective on life? Like from, from being from Philly? Because you know, by us being from Philly, a lot of people don't even cross the bridge. Right. You know, so did that do you feel like going to different locations like Dubai, Paris and things like that? Like broaden your horizons so you can just like, you know what, yo, it's bigger than Philly. Like Right. No, absolutely. Like I said, like once you start traveling, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't even have to travel out the country, just going to right. different states like Miami, mm -hmm. New York. Some people haven't even been been to New York. New York, yeah. that's one of my favorite places to go to. Like just <laughs> like just the shopping, just the how they it's so fast paced and how everything stay open late, but yeah, like it's just open. Like I said, you see how people live, how they function different, how they dress, how they talk, how the food tastes different. Right. Like just all that stuff, and then you come back and you want to make you motivated. Do you feel as though it's a little difficult, or it's kind of hard to get some type of recognition by being a young entrepreneur in the city, or you really uh, don't pay that type of shit? I was about to say I don't really pay no recognition no mind. Like I'm not. I'm not in this for like no name or or anything like this. I'm mm -hmm. in this for like for like the wealth, like the established, make sure my family is cool. Like I'm the first person in my family to where go. I'm breaking that cycle, kicking them them doors for us. And you know, when I had eventually had kids, they cool, I'm able to get them the blueprint. Like right. that's my focus. I'm not really worried about like, you know, no rankings or no titles or anything like that. Right. I'm in my own lane. I created my own lane. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you feel as though it's any struggles though by being an entrepreneur? The reason I'm just asking you, I mean, asking you these questions is because it's entrepreneurs that's looking at this. Right. Know? And I know it's a lot of people that really want to know these questions. You know, All you right. have a lot of you. Are, you're a man with different hats, mm. and you know, you make it seem, you know, easy. But no, I just, I just not, want you to like open right. up on it. Like, what's what can be a struggle? Like, do you have any doubt? Like, it's it's not a day that you wake up like right. shit, man. I'm like doing this shit versus. You know what? Fuck it. Another day, another dollar. Like, no, like you feel right. what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm I'm keep it real, like all the way real. Like, one thing that you know that you gotta get comfortable with as an entrepreneur, just like in general in life, like one of the biggest lessons that you learn is patience. Like, like I can't stress that enough. Like patience, like understanding that everything's not on your time. Like how you might see something, God yeah, gonna have a different plan. Like your plans might not always add up. And throughout, when you patient and you don't get something right away throughout that time that you, you know, that you're um, uh, attacking whatever you're trying to achieve, mm -hmm. by the time you eventually get there, you're more prepared. You've been through way more shit. You've been through real, some real shit. And when you got to where you're going, you appreciate it more because it, you know what I'm saying? You had to work 10 times harder than you expected. Right. You thought you was going to get it easier. God made it 10 times harder, so you appreciate it and not lose it. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, you don't realize, like, during the process, you just frustrate, like, yo, like, psh, like, I, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Like, it's stuff in the way. It's hurdles that's stopping me from getting there. Right. You got to still fight. And like I said, when one door closed, another mm -hmm. one open. open. All definitely. these opportunities. Most definitely, most definitely. Now, a lot of rappers mm -hmm. are in the game. You know, um, I pay attention a lot. And uh, a lot of people that are entrepreneurs seem to turn on one person. Right. It's not Hov. It's not D. <laughs> it's Nipsey. Right. Why my is God. that, man? I, 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 I really want to know that, though, man. Like, why is that, man? Because, like, you, my man Weezy, right. Bree, I be seeing a lot of people watch uh, Nipsey. They listen to him a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you don't mind me asking, like, why is he, like, influential in a sense? If I must like, say. Honestly, because like in his music, he giving you real life game. Right. Like he not just telling you like, yo, he sold this kind of work. He shot this many niggas. Like he drive this kind of car. Right. He letting you know like, 
like real life blueprints on like how you can actually level up in life and how it's a marathon. So for instance, like right. he's showing you actually like Nip on one of the few artists that actually show you like the business that he's doing, like outside mm -hmm. of music. Like right. he show you that he got a clothing line. Right. He show you that he got um that one day independent. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before he did this deal with Atlantic. Mm -hmm. But just in his music is is real is is real jewels. Right. Like who? Those real jewels that, like I said, that it's a marathon. That and it get me, it get me through. Like I said, rough times. Right. Right. Um. Now, for those that really want to be, you know, attentive to his class, like why should the everyday person come to your class? Like, the everyday person should come to my class because these are the tools that all successful people have. Like. I don't, I don't care what lane they in. Like all successful people, all millionaires, multi-millionaires, billionaires, they all have some type of um, investment to real estate. They all have some type of good credit. You know what I'm saying? They all have passwords or a stamp. Like they all have goals that they achieved to get to where they're going. They all have businesses. So these are every, these are all the things I'm teaching in my class. So. If you're not trying to be on that type of time, you're not trying to level up and be a boss, right. and you're not trying to establish wealth, or you don't have goals in life or anything like that, then this wouldn't be for you. Right. But you wasting if, your time. If you're trying to be successful in life, if you want to see these M's, if you want to, like I said, travel the world, get these passports stamped, like take your mom out the country for a birthday and stuff like that, mm -hmm. then be it. Come to the top end bosses class, man. March third, from ten to four, Sunday at my barbershop, my hair salon, TYB. Now, speaking of barbershop, one question I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you. Are you a barber? Right, I'm not a barber. Like, I'm not a barber. Like, the reason yeah. I would ask that, because like, a lot of people probably want to know, like, why generate a barbershop? Or why right. come up with a barbershop business? Like, why did you come up with that? Because, you know, that's some, somebody might say, oh, Dad, why did you ask that? Like, you know, why, what made you come up with a barbershop? Yeah, I think, mm -hmm. like, when you go to the, like, as a businessman, I'm always just, like, on like on the clock so when you go to the barbershop like what kind of environment is that is people from all different walks of life is all different type of conversations mm -hmm. so just in a shop alone you could sell anything in a shop like any you could sell hair in a shop you could mm -hmm. sell any type of merchandise in shop. that's mm -hmm. gonna you know what i'm saying like that's a that's a your mecca right that makes you sense. don't have to go out into the streets for real that's it. everybody come. Everybody gonna get their hair cut. Right. Everybody gonna get their hair done. Right. <clears throat> that and like I said, so many different kids and so forth and different type of people in there. So the conversations that we're having, mm -hmm. that's the conversations we having in the shop. We trying, you know, just change the culture and put us in a different direction from, you know, from like I said, the shop. So in 2019, man, uh, what's big for you, man? Like, what's in the near future if you? If you don't wanna, if you don't mind sharing your secrets. Um, this year you're gonna see a lot more, a lot more top young boss merchandise. You know, right now I have on our, a honey, a honey backwoods hoodie. Yeah, you know you look like backwoods, yeah. You I see, and I like that. So you're like gonna that. see That's a lot different. more merch. I like that. The summer coming up, so definitely, definitely look out for our website dropping topyoungbosses.com. Mm -hmm. We uh got a movie coming out this year about two summers ago. Actually wrote a movie okay. and you know uh, directed it with my man Lay. You wrote the movie. Yeah, I wrote the movie. Yep. Yeah. God, I just said a man with different too many hats. Like, yeah. you, like I wrote a movie. You mm -hmm. know, I was just sitting back one day. I was working on a uh, house, and then it just came to me. I said, "Summertime in Philly. Like, what if I just do uh, a mixtape?" Right. No, no. I said, "What if I do a movie called Summertime in Philly?" And just tell like how I see the summer in Philly from my perspective. Okay. I said, damn, it'd be hot if I do a mixtape with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Do like a soundtrack movie. And you rap yeah. too. And he rap yeah. too. Okay. Yeah, I ended up rapping for the movie. Prior mm -hmm. to the movie, I never rapped. So I had to, that was like probably the hardest part for me. Like okay. learning how to rap in two months. That's what's up, man. So yeah, look out for that. Summertime in Philly. It's a movie and it's a mixtape. I got Summertime in Philly, the movie, and Summertime in Philly, the mixtape coming out summer 19. So let these people know where to find you at, man. 
Um, you can find me on Instagram, uh, JUS underscore real, just real. Uh, also, I got appliances too, you know, um, so all my real estate investors, anybody from homeowners, anybody, grandma, aunties, uncles, I got appliances. And that shit, he, he got that joint booming, man. Go on his Insta so, snaps, man. All GE appliances. Right. Follow my, that, my appliance page, appliance plug. So. You the plug, man. He, right. he ain't running off on that plug. You feel me? Right. Well, he's definitely, man. But I'm glad that you had the opportunity to come down to the Dead Ball no, Show, it, man. man. And um, I really wish um, I was, I wish I'd be able to make it, you know, to your workshop or your seminar or no, class. We're going to have more. You know, because um, I really want to invest in it. Um, I, will, I really want to learn about the um, topics that you're speaking on. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a conversation off camera. Um, but at the end of the day, if y'all have the opportunity to come out March 3rd, like you just said, um, go out there and support them on 22nd Street. I feel as though I like to call 22nd Street the Black um, Entrepreneur Road. Thanks. You know how they just say Jewelers Road downtown? Think about it. A lot of black businesses yeah. right on that strip on 22nd Street. Yeah. You know, so that shit be damn near popping got, like South Street. You got Umi, you got Umi D's. Mm -hmm. You know, shout out to Hanna. You got Country Cooking, mm -hmm. that's salt. Mm -hmm. You got uh, Major League Barbershop. Mm -hmm. You got Top Young Bosses, you got us. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Juan the Barber, Nell the Barber. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got Salon Brilliance, mm -hmm. Uncut. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Uncut. You know, they about to open up a spot in Miami. Like, come on, man. Like, that, like that's major. That's Philly. motivation. Philly, we on some shit, man. man you already know, man. What's your boy, Dev Hall, man? We already here for episode 12. Y'all already know Dev Hall just real. Y'all know what to do.